Hey guys, Sarah here with Room for Tuesday. I promised to give you a quick tutorial on how I edit interior photos in Photoshop. So keep watching to see how I do it. All right, I promised to show you guys how I edit an interior photo. So I've pulled this photo of our previous laundry room and I'm just gonna take you through the editing process. Um, I always shoot in camera raw. I shoot with my Nikon. So these are NEF files and that just means it's raw and I can manipulate it in camera raw before I take it over into Photoshop Creative Cloud. So first of all, when I shot this particular image, I didn't clean my lens and it had junk all over. So you can see all these little dots up here, which we'll address later on, but this is like a, a image that needs a lot of help. So I wanted to show you lots of different things I plan to do to it. First of all, I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna address the lighting in camera raw. So you notice these corners are pretty dark and I want to brighten those up. So I'm gonna grab the graduated filter tool and pull that onto the corners and I'm just gonna adjust the temperature and brighten that corner up until it matches the rest of the space. And you can do multiple graduated filters. So it's something you kind of just have to play with until you get the right amount of brightness and the right temperature. So now I'm gonna do this corner. And then sometimes I'll bring the entire thing down just to brighten it up a little bit. And again, it's just something you have to play with. I'll work through the bottom sections as well. That's a little bit warmer, so I'm gonna add a bit of yellow. This side as well. And then I'll pull the entire thing up just to brighten that. I shot this particular photo on a cloudy day, I remember it, and so it's good that we're seeing all of these shadows because it's really a pretty easy fix. All right, so I'm kind of just continuing that process with the graduated filters, putting pins on here that lighten up the corners. So once you have that done, you'll notice there's this giant shadow in the middle, and there's, you know, the fern back here is really dark, hidden, in a shadow on the other side of the cabinet. So I'm gonna go in with the adjustment brush. And right now my brush is pretty big, so I'm gonna make it smaller. And kind of just brush in a little bit of brightness there. And again, I'm gonna adjust the exposure and the temperature. And then I'm gonna come zoom in, which is Command Plus and I'm going to adjust the fern area as well. So we'll do that. Just brighten that up a bit. And then I'm gonna put another pin on here as well. Oh, oops. So this is a really good example. I just hit Command Z to undo that because I forgot to hit new pin and I don't want to lighten this area on the same pin because this also gets lighter. So before you add another area to lighten, you wanna hit new on the adjustment brush. So I'm gonna redo the fern. That way it has its own separate um, dial. And then I'm gonna hit new again and just brighten the back of this built-in dog kennel. And you'll notice that a new pin appears on the screen so you don't have to worry that the entire thing is getting brighter. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna zoom out and I'm just gonna adjust the, adjust the entire image now. So I'm gonna lighten the exposure a tiny bit. I'm gonna pull the contrast, probably pull the black so we can get a nice rich color palette. And then uh, maybe just a bit of saturation and I'll pull it a little bit more blue because it's looking pretty yellow. All right, that's looking pretty good. Um, so now I'm going to pull it open into Photoshop. So I'm just clicking open and it's reading the camera raw file that I just edited and now we're in Creative Cloud. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is you'll notice some lens distortion. I wasn't super straight. I basically didn't do a good job setting this image up and shooting it. So first of all, I'm gonna correct that. So to do that, I need to go to layer, smart object, convert that to a smart object, and then transform this with the warp tool. So you'll notice this cabinet looks super skewed. I'm just gonna come in here and fix that and straighten it all out by pulling the corner pins. We want everything to be nice and aligned. Again, this could be straighter, so I'm kinda just tweaking that and adjusting as needed. This is also on a mega downhill, so I'm kinda just gonna pull that up so that everything looks nice and level and balanced. And now we're kind of in a better, we're looking better as far as our straight lines go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and then it's gonna set that into place. Next, I'm going to flatten this because we don't need it to be a smart object at this point. I am going to click on my healing brush tool and come in here and get rid of all of the junk on my lens. So I'm adjusting the brush size. I'm gonna zoom way in so I can see very good. And I'm just gonna click over these spots that were on my lens and just edit those out. Super annoying that I did that. I should have cleaned my lens better. I don't know if it was raining or what got on there, if it was just dust, but definitely check your lens before shooting. So I think I have all of them. Sometimes it's hard to tell. And then while I have this tool out, I'll go in and adjust anything else that needs edited. Like this little dot is kind of bothering. If there's any crumbs or whatever, you can go in and fix that. Uh, I'll also remove ugly things that nobody likes to see. Like I forgot to take this sticker off or maybe it's a sticker that you're supposed to leave on there. So I'll just get rid of that. And everything else is looking pretty good. I'll remove some of these bright spots that were reflections. This is kind of weird, so I might just edit out the top part of that sconce so that it doesn't look awkward. This looks like there's a little dirt in the cabinet. So you can kind of just go around and adjust anything. Like there's a little bit of dirt on the cabinet. Any, any little thing that you're not liking. For example, if I don't like this branch on the fern, I can even just take that right out. Um, I didn't like the way that that did that. So I'm gonna zoom in and pay a little bit closer attention. Looks a little bit better. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So like the, that part of the fern didn't really bother me. So I'm just gonna leave that as is. All right, so we're looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna come in here to my um, panel and go to levels, and I'm gonna pull this to the edge of the mountain, is what I call it, and it just brightens everything. So if I turn it off, you can see that it just looks a little bit brighter, a little bit more crisp. And while I'm in the panel, I'm also going to pull up the brightness and contrast. If that needs adjusted, you can brighten it even further. I don't like to overexpose or blow out my images, so I'll probably just adjust the contrast. Um, curves is another tool you can use here to kind of manipulate the color and the brightness. So I think that that looks a little bit better. You can see on and off, it just kind of takes out a little bit of those shadows. So once you're happy with adjusting your panel over here, you can go ahead and hit layer, flatten, and we're looking pretty good. Uh, I don't see a lot that is bothering me at this point. There are a few more dots up here that I might come in and just edit out. But for the most part, that's looking pretty good and I would definitely feel comfortable posting it like this just to show you some more tricks. If you wanted to uh, tweak these lights even further, I can come up here with my selection tool 
and you'll notice this one's kind of distorted a bit. So then I'm gonna hit Command T and transform it and just bring it in a little bit so the shape is not so weird. And then you'll notice I have this odd bar. So I'm gonna come in with my healing brush and just kind of brush that out so that it looks natural. And immediately we've fixed the shape on that light fixture. It, it doesn't look so stretched. Um, if you're not feeling these dark shadows around the lights, another thing you could do is come in here with your eyedropper uh, and brush it in. So now I've hit B for my brush tool. I'm gonna add a new layer. I've got a soft brush and I'm gonna pull it down to like 20 to 30. And I'm just kinda gonna brush out that shadow a little bit. So as I'm brushing out that shadow, I'm just making sure that it's lightened up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other light. And then once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and grab your eraser tool and just remove the brushed area over the light fixture. So I'm starting with the left one and then I'll move over to the right one and bring that light fixture back. And I like to keep things looking pretty natural. So uh, you can go over to your layer and you can see when I turn it on and off, it looks natural to have a little shadow. So one way to do this is to turn the layer back on and adjust your opacity to 30 to 40. And then it's just a subtle difference of the lightened shadows, but it still looks pretty natural. So once you're happy with that, flatten the image again. And then um, that's the ceiling's taken care of. Now when I save this file, I just usually save it on my desktop as a JPEG and I'll title it and then I'm done. So I could post it like this if I wanted. Um, I usually save it at maximum quality 12, just so it's high res and you know, it's printable and usually around 4,000 pixels wide. But if I'm saving it for the blog, sometimes I'll switch it out. Um, sizing an image for the web is much different. So go to image, image size, it's 4,000 pixels wide right now. I usually make that 1,000 for the blog. So I'll go ahead and type in 1,000 and then keep the resolution at 300. The key is changing bicubic sharper to reduction. When you're downsizing images, you want them to stay nice and crisp, and this is really the box you need to check. So you're resampling that to a smaller size, and this is the best way to do that. So then you can hit OK, and if you zoom in, you can see everything looks pretty good and isn't distorted or pixelized. So. That's really the best way to resample and downsize an image and save it for the web. So that's pretty much the process. If you guys have any questions at all, please let me know. Drop me a comment in the blog post or on my YouTube link and I'll get back with you. But editing photos is really an easy process.